Today is Laity Sunday, and I've invited John to uh, share a little word with us, and he'll be doing the scripture reading also. Thank you. Can I share a word? <laughs> well, as Pastor Frank said, it, it is Laity Sunday, and uh, in a lot of churches today, you can expect two things to happen. One, uh, if they know about it, attendance drops. <laughs> and two, there's a greater appreciation for the wit and wisdom and skill of the pastor's uh, sermons. It is a curious thing that um, Lady Sunday comes in the very middle of Pastor Appreciation Month. He has a well served. <laughs> Uh, and uh, the lectionary today has a, a, a passage of scripture of a pastor's words to a layman. Let's listen to that. Uh, it is uh, Paul's letters, uh, Paul's words in the second chapter of Timothy, the third, uh, uh, in, I'm sorry, the third chapter of Timothy, the third chapter of second Timothy. You, Timothy, however, know all about my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, faith, patience, love, endurance, persecutions, sufferings, what kinds of things happened to me in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra, the persecutions I endured. Yet the Lord rescued me from all of that. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. While evil men and impostors will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise to salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearance, appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you, Timothy, keep your head in all situations. Endure hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. Discharge all the duties of your ministry. This is the word of God for the people of God. Well, there's a story behind uh, this scripture. I'll try to make it a, a short story. Let's go back in time. Let's go to the small town of Lystra, uh, the biblical, in the biblical uh, area of Galatia, now modern day Turkey. The year is AD 51, about a generation after Jesus was crucified and uh, rose from the dead. We find ourselves in a marketplace, and over there, away from some of the bustle and noise is a small group of people, maybe 20 or 30 people, sitting down around two men. One man is very energetic and kind of fiery. His name is Paul. His companion is named Silas, and he adds a few comments once in a while. We turn our attention to three people who are listening very intently. There's an older woman by the name of Lois, and her daughter Eunice, and a, a uh, boy by the name of Timothy, who is in his mid teens. At times, Timothy nods his head to show that he understands what Paul 
of saying. After a while, the, uh, the message is over, and it's ended with a prayer. People get up, shuffle away, but there are a few people who remain and want to talk with Paul. Lois says, we were here two years ago when you were here, and we believe you. We are Jews, and what you made and what you said made sense. We believe that Jesus of Nazareth was the Son of God and is our personal Savior. And Eunice said, when we were here when you healed our crippled friend, the people were so amazed that they thought you were Zeus and Hermes and, 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 and gods, and you got so upset that you tore your clothes off. No, we're just men like you. And we were here when some Jews from Antioch and Iconium came. They were very angry at you. They stirred the people against you. And they began throwing rocks at you. They stoned you. You fell to the ground and were bleeding from the head and the nose. And you know, and you didn't move. They dragged you out of the city. We thought you were dead. I stood there and I saw you start to move. And they helped you up and you walked away. We thought you were dead. And Paul smiled a little bit and said, I may have done. Around that time, a man came and put his hand on Timothy's shoulder and he said, We want you to know about this young man. We really love and admire him. He's very knowledgeable. Lois and Eunice have taught him Torah and the prophets since he was just a little fellow. He's a responsible and knowledgeable, and we think a lot about him. Let's fast forward a couple of days. Paul finds Timothy in the market. Timothy, I have something to ask you. Would you join Cyrus and me in our, in our journeys going around and talking about Jesus? But I hear that your father was a Greek, a Gentile. Have you been circumcised? No, sir. Well, that's a problem for us because, as you know, we need to go into the synagogues and you won't be able to go there uncircumcised. He said, I want to go. Please circumcise me. Well, the rest is history. Timothy went with Paul and Silas, and they won souls for Jesus. And after a while, the relationship between Timothy and Paul became closer and closer. It was no longer student and mentor. Paul began to call him. Timothy, his beloved son, and later, my brother. Paul gave Timothy more and more responsibility, at times by himself alone. And eventually, Paul uh, had Timothy become the bishop of the church at Ephesus, big and busy and bustling, one of the most important churches in Christendom. Probably Timothy was in Rome with Paul when he was in prison and watched him beheading the martyrdom of Paul. Later, Paul, uh, Timothy, as bishop of Ephesus, saw a noisy procession going by one day, started preaching at them. It was, uh, they were going to worship the goddess Diana. Well, the crowd turned into a mob and clubbed him to death. This shy, young, energetic, reserved boy had become a powerful influence in the, in the area. And yet, his cost of his call to discipleship cost him his life, just as Paul's cost to discipleship cost him his life. I suspect that there's a little Timothy in all of us.
many of us are quiet and reserved and timid in our Christian faith. And yet we are called to discipleship. Timothy was called to discipleship and it cost him his life. We are called to discipleship not to lose our lives or to endure hardships and difficulties as Paul and Timothy. But we're called to serve and to follow. And there's sanctity in service. When we serve and follow, God hears music. When it was Timothy serving and following, it was music that was so glorious and mad and majestic that it might like the Hallelujah Chorus being sung. When you and I serve and follow, it's more like soft humming, but still music in God's ears. And when God hears that soft humming, God is pleased. And now, let's have some words from our very own mentor. Thank you, John. Would you just uh, appreciate him today with that little applause? <laughs> when uh, I was moving to Schulenburg, uh, uh, John and Ginger graciously invited me to stay at their guest house. And uh, you know how it is the first day and all the boxes are thrown in your house and there's like, well, where are the sheets? <laughs> and, uh, uh, it's, it's a little rough that first night, and uh, we had a solace there uh, that first night when we arrived. And uh, ever since, he's, he's uh, been a kind and gracious host uh, here of, of the church, and uh, many of you also have a ministry of service, and I felt that here. Um, I feel so I live in a day where anyone can be famous. All you need is a camera or a computer or something, and your opinion can go viral. Your little video clip, a lot of them quite unfortunate. <laughs> so many tripping videos, <laughs> so many hurting yourself videos on the internet, but uh, you can be famous, um, but the problem is that today, people want their ears to be tickled. They want to hear what they want to hear. In the old days, it was much the same. The, the prophets that made the most money were the ones that gave you good news. <laughs> Those were the people who made the most money uh, because they gave good news and people were pleased with that and they would pay them and say, hey, why don't you come back next week? I want to hear that again. <laughs> Prophets like Jeremiah who said, you're doomed, your city is doomed, you're all going to be carried away to captivity if you don't die. <laughs> they didn't make a lot of money. <laughs> they just didn't get repeat calls. Um, and yet, there's a standard. See, we, we live in a cafeteria society where convenience is catered to us, and we pay extra for it. If you like tomatoes, you can have tomatoes. If you want double tomatoes, you can have double tomatoes. And if you're like some kids, uh, you don't like tomatoes at all, you don't have to have them at all, right? It's a convenience. Well, there's a problem when there is the Word of God and you start to say, I want tomatoes, but not mayonnaise. <laughs> I want mustard, but not ketchup. Is this truly the word of God? Listen to what Paul says to Paul. Paul. Paul says to Timothy. But for you, no matter what anyone else is doing, continue in what you have learned and firmly believe, knowing from whom you learned it. I'm not some blogger. I'm not out to get your money and more views. I had a direct revelation from God, and I want you to know the truth. I stand on the thousands and thousands of year old scriptures, and I want you to know from where it's come. 
and this new revelation of Jesus Christ, which gives us new understanding into the Torah. And how from childhood you have known the sacred writings, that you are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, and for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient and equipped for every good work. Friends, we can't just listen to the most popular. We can't listen to the one who has more power, most power in our society. We have to listen to God Almighty, who gives you the word of life right here. The bread of life for our salvation. And in this word, Paul urges us in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and in the view of his appearing and his kingdom, which is coming, I solemnly urge you, proclaim the message, be <laughs> persistent whether the time is favorable or unfavorable, convince, rebuke, and encourage with the utmost patience in teaching. <laughs> For the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine, but will have itching ears. They will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away to this. As for you, always be sober, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, carry out your ministry fully. The word of God for the people of God. The, the modern church has a sickness. Uh, basically, we have this wrong conception that the pastor is a star player, all-star, Frank Beck, and he has to score all the goals. <laughs> and that's just so wrong. Paul says, <clears throat> Paul says, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient equipped for every good work. You see, the pastor's job is not to be the only evangelist of the church. The pastor's job is to equip all the saints so that all the saints can be equipped to do the work of God. Amen? Amen. So, turn to your neighbor and say, you're an all-star. <laughs> you are an all-star. <laughs> you are the star player of the church. I want you to take that deep into your heart and your soul and claim that identity because Christ has called us, every saint, in the presence of God and in Christ Jesus to proclaim the message, to be persistent and whether the time is favorable or unfavorable, to share this good news that Christ has come and died for sin. This is some good news. This is news that kids are dying for today. Kids who have no hope, who think they'll never be good enough because that's what they're told they need to be to go to heaven. They need to know that Jesus has come and risen again for them. They need to know some of your old friends who think they'll never be good enough for Jesus. They need to know that Jesus Christ was good enough for them and that their sins are no more. They just need to repent and receive God's forgiveness. They need to hear that so badly. Friends, would you think of somebody today that needs some good news and share with them this week because you're called, whether the time is favorable or unfavorable. Friends, if you know somebody is destined for hell, It is an act of love to say, you're in the wrong 
and you need to get right. That is an act of love. When I say somebody, I'm sorry, but you're going the right way. That's not because I hate them. It's because I love them. And I want to see them saved. I want to see them have eternal life. I want to see them have the abundant life in this world. So many people are just out there seeking pleasure, doing what makes them happy, but it only makes them happy for two minutes, ten minutes, one week, and then they need another fix. They need another thing to make them happy. They're going further into debt. They're losing their health. We need to tell them there's a better way. There's a greater high. There is a more fulfilling way. All stars, this is our mission. Not just the pastor, but every saint called by God to be in mission together. Kids served last week, right? And kids, this applies to you too. There's somebody in your class who needs to know that Jesus loves them. And the Apostle John, he was over a hundred when he was still saying, love God and love one another. That takes care of everything. Every one of us, you're not too old, you're not too young to share this message, which everybody needs to know. Amen? Amen. Let's pray together. Loving God, we thank you for this Lady Sunday on which we're reminded that every one of us is a minister in your name. Every one of us has been given the gift of your life and your spirit. And even the timid ones can share just how much God loves somebody. Lord, bring to our minds that one person that we need to speak to this week. Give to us strength and boldness and the right words and condition their hearts already, Lord, to hear your words and to receive good news that will draw them to yourself and give them the abundant life. <clears throat> Lord, we also ask that you would give us persistence in prayer. Like little children, Lord, help us to cry out to you day and night and to salvation in earnest. In Jesus' name.